ever wondered how your phone unlocks when you point it towards your face? Or how social media used to tag you in a photo full of people? How the traffic police is accurately able to send us chalan for jumping a traffic light? Even when there is no traffic policeman in sight? All these fancy applications are possible because of computer vision. Computer vision gives the ability to computers to not only see but to also analyze digital images and videos. Since videos are just a sequence of images which are displayed at a given frequency, this means whatever computer vision can do with images, it can also do with videos. Therefore, for simplicity, we will stick to images in this video. Pun not intended. So let's dive a little deeper into how computer vision is able to analyze images and give us useful information. Now, digital images are made of pixels. You can think of pixel as the smallest unit of an image. And each pixel has a number to indicate intensity. So, in a black and white image, 0 denotes black and 255 denotes white. And every other number between 0 and 255 represents a shade between black and white. Like this image shows us numbers close to 255 around the white part of the image and around 0 in the darker region of the image. Unlike black and white images, most colored images have three layers of pixel. One each for red, green and blue. The three basic colors. Using a combination of these colors, other colors can be defined as well just like in our color TVs. So far, we have understood that digital images are made of numbers. And numbers are also what our computer systems understand. In fact, researchers used to extract information from images using these numbers and some simple mathematical computations. They used a small grid of numbers called filters or kernels. When you would pass these filters across an image, doing some simple addition and multiplication, we would get some interesting output. For example, if we pass this filter across an image, we would only get the vertical edges from the image. And if we pass this filter across an image, we would only get the horizontal edges in the image. Actually, the state-of-art computer vision algorithms use the same base logic to extract information from an image. Although there are three key differences. One, they use hundreds of different filters like the ones we have seen. Two, they apply these hundreds of filters in many steps repeatedly. And three, they let the architecture learn the right values in these filters using machine learning. Just like we discussed in the machine learning video, the computer vision algorithms will have to train on thousands and thousands of images before they can give something of value to us. Let's have a look at some popular use cases of computer vision. One of the most fascinating use cases of computer vision is of face recognition. Now through face recognition, we can unlock our phone by pointing at it. But there are many other use cases as well. Government bodies can use face recognition to identify missing people, to identify wanted criminals and suspects from CCTV footages. Face recognition has also helped in making our world safer in pandemic times by replacing touch-based biometric attendance with face-based attendance in offices. Computer vision can also help in detecting events such as the event of a cricket ball going past the rope. From the government's perspective, the event could be an entry of a person or a drone in a restricted area like government offices. Or it could be a car violating the zebra crossing when the traffic light is red. In fact, computer vision is also used by traffic police today to read number plates and generate chalans. Another popular use case is medical imagery analysis. 
Today, computer vision can help detect acute neurological illnesses from CT scans. It can look for fractures in bone x-rays and can differentiate between cancerous and non-cancerous skin lesions. In fact, for some medical tasks, the performance of computer vision exceeds that of doctors. From the government's point of view, computer vision can help in forensics such as getting information on age, gender and time of death by looking at an image of a bone skeleton. Another application developed during pandemic was to study X-ray scan of lungs and suggest whether it is impacted by COVID or not. Computer vision can also help in navigation and is one of the key technologies being used in self-driven cars and movements of robots as well. Some other examples of computer visions are detecting pests in crops, detecting faulty products, detecting forest fires, reporting a road accident, identifying land use patterns, detecting availability of parking spots, predicting crop yield, checking if people are wearing masks, and so on. In fact, one way to think about computer vision application is wherever we have an image or a video, there may be a use case of computer vision. To wrap this video, let's take a look at a few concerns with computer vision. To train a computer vision algorithm well, we need to train it on gigabytes and terabytes of images and videos. Which means we would need to spend a lot on storage cost. Further, to train the algorithm fast, we would also need to spend on computational cost as well. These costs pose an entry barrier to new researchers looking to make their mark in the computer vision field. Computer vision can also learn the biases present in the data. For example, a face-based recognition system trained on faces in China may not work very well to detect faces in India because of different facial patterns of people in the two countries. Finally, there are also privacy-related issues related to computer vision, particularly face recognition. In fact, Facebook has shut down its face recognition system which used to automatically recognize people from photos. Alright, so in this video we learned what is computer vision, how it works and we also talked about many applications of computer vision. At the end, we also talked a little bit about some limitations. Look forward to see you in our next Emerging Technology video.